Today I'm making homemade strawberry frozen yogurt and there's a nice farm down the street that grows really great strawberries and they're in season so that's what we're going to start with. All right, so here we're going to start with some fresh strawberries. This is nine ounces of fresh strawberries, and I washed them and hulled them already. And what we got to do is grind them into a puree. Now, I like doing this in my blender because I have a really good blender. You could also do this in the food processor if you wanted. Kind of put it on. Now, the great thing is you want to start low and then finish high. Start low so you can break down the solids. Then put it on a one. And slowly turn it up and make a nice puree. Like Formula One right now. All right, so that you can see is nicely pureed, almost like a sauce. And I know because I make this all the time that nine ounces of strawberries give you three quarters of a cup of puree. Oh, the smell of strawberries right now is overwhelming. Okay. Now, a key to making strawberry froyo that has a really good texture is to use a little gelatin. It helps the froyo set up and gives it a little bit of that nice chew. So you want a teaspoon of powdered gelatin. It's not quite a packet. I'm gonna sprinkle the gelatin right over the puree. This is just gonna hydrate the gelatin. You notice I'm using a big wide pot really spreading the puree out. If the gelatin clumps too much, it forms kind of a lump in the finished ice cream. It doesn't taste bad. It's a little weird for the person who gets it. My husband's gotten it once or twice. That's why I know it happens. So you just want to sprinkle it really evenly. I'm going to spin the pan. And the key to good gelatin is just letting this sit and hydrate for about five minutes. Then we're going to put it on the stove top and let it melt. This gelatin has been hydrating for five minutes. You can see it has that wrinkled appearance on top. That's good. Now I'm going to put it over low heat. I'm just going to let the gelatin melt gently into the puree. You could also easily do this in the microwave, obviously not in a metal pot, but you'd want to blast it on high power for about 30 seconds. Still just bubbling around the edges. All right, so that gelatin has melted, didn't take long. Now I'm gonna turn the heat off, pull the pot off the hot burner and let this cool for five minutes while we get the yogurt ready. All right, time to focus on the yogurt. Now here I have a quart of whole milk yogurt that's plain, it's not sweetened, and I've let it drain overnight. Now this is how you drain yogurt, it's very easy. Take a nice deep bowl, put a strainer over it and line it with a triple layer of cheesecloth. Then you add the quarter of the yogurt, you cover it with plastic wrap and you refrigerate it until all the whey drains out. Now the amount of whey that drains out of this yogurt is important for the recipe. You just wanna get rid of one and a quarter cups of whey. So I'm gonna set this aside. I know it's shocking how much liquid comes out of that. So I'm gonna measure out one and a quarter cups. If you have any extra, you're gonna to wanna to stir that back into the yogurt. So I'm gonna get rid of this. And now the yogurt's gonna go back into the bowl. Okay, just a few ingredients go into the yogurt. We're gonna start with some Lyle syrup. Now this is a British ingredient. It is cane syrup, but it has a deep sort of maple syrup-like flavor that is really good in this yogurt. If you can't find it, you can easily substitute corn syrup. But because it's an invert sugar, that really is important for the texture of the froyo. So don't leave it out. You only need three tablespoons. It's also the kind of ingredient that once you get in in your house, you're gonna find yourself adding it to all sorts of things because it's just a really lovely but unique flavor. Next, we're gonna add some sugar, three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. Last but not least, a little bit of salt, eighth of a teaspoon thereabouts. I'm using kind of a small bowl here. I'm doing that on purpose. I'm a big fan of using big bowls for whisking and mixing. It makes less of a mess. But this bowl has a lid and we're gonna let this chill. So that's why I'm using the smaller bowl. All right, time to add the cooled strawberry puree. We're gonna add this right to the yogurt mixture. Now we're just gonna whisk this together and this is the frozen yogurt base. From here, it goes right into the ice cream maker. But one trick is you wanna chill this mixture down before putting it in the maker. That'll just give you better ice cream. The longer it takes to churn ice cream, the worse it is, the more ice crystals. So you can either put this in an ice bath and chill it down really quickly, or you can put it in the fridge overnight, which is generally what I do. I know, it's a comically small bowl for this. Like I said, I chose this bowl on purpose. This is my ice cream making bowl because it fits everything and it has a lid. So when I put it in the fridge, it works really well. So into the fridge this goes, and then we'll come back and turn the ice cream later. 
Time to make the frozen yogurt so this mixture is nice and cool. And again, I like to put it in the fridge. I just think it's easier, but if you're in tight on time, you could put this mixture over a bowl of ice into an ice water bath and chill it down quickly. You want this mixture to be at least 40 degrees before you put it in the mixer. Into the canister it goes. All right, canister into the ice cream maker. Turn it on. Press the start button. Now this is a really nice ice cream maker. I treated myself after having a number of less expensive ones where you freeze the canisters, which work really well. But how long it goes and how long it takes really depends on your ice cream maker, so follow the manufacturer's instructions. Now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a homemade chocolate shell topping for ice cream. And yeah, you can buy it in the store, but when you make it yourself, it tastes so much better because you can use good chocolate. Now it's just three ingredients, and the key is using coconut oil because it's high in saturated fat, so it's solid at room temperature. All right, so the ratio of coconut oil to chocolate is two to three, and that translates to a quarter cup of coconut oil and three ounces of chocolate. We're just gonna put this in a little saucepan that we're gonna melt over the stove. Now you can also do this in the microwave, very easy. And microwaves are nice because you can teach your kids how to make it and they can make it for themselves. You could also use chocolate chips here. I like using chopped chocolate because I like good chocolate. That's three ounces of bittersweet chocolate that I chopped up. Last, just a pinch of salt. And we're going to put this on the stove, medium low heat, just until it's all melted. So I'm just going to melt this over medium low heat. If you were doing this in the microwave, use 50% power, just because you never know how powerful your microwave is. And again, we're just looking for the chocolate to melt, and then we're going to whisk it in with the coconut oil. Mmm, smells good. That's it. Chocolate's melted. The coconut oil is melted. Now I'm just going to set this aside until we're ready for our ice cream. <laughs> Time for the homemade frozen yogurt. Oh, the first scoop is out of the container is always the best. There's one, two. Now time for the chocolate hardening sauce. I love that magic shell, it hardens so fast. I know this is gilding the lily, but a few fresh strawberries that melt in with the chocolate and the ice cream. Oh, now for the taste. Mmm. Mmm. The yogurt is the perfect balance of strawberries. You can taste the yogurt, the tang, a little bit of sweet, and that chocolate shell with the fresh strawberries just takes it over the edge. Thanks for watching. What'd you think? Leave a comment below and let me know what you're excited to cook this week. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. You can get today's recipes and more for free at our website, americastestkitchen.com slash julia at home.